It's all going down in Newcastle. You don't want to miss this one. Join us for the very first IFL Live at London's Indigo at the O2, Sunday, August the 13th, with me, Cook and Cassius, and some very special guests, Eddie Hearn, Darren Barker, Johnny Fisher, and more. Tickets now on sale. So in the words of Eddie Hearn... You get up, you dress up, and you fucking show up. This is Colin McGuigan for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Frank Smith in Detroit. Frank, first of all, how was the Aspies last night? Unbelievable. Actually, one of the best thing, like shows I've ever been to. Um, it was like a really good version of a sports personality of the year. Like ten times that. Uh, bumped into my mate LeBron. You know, congratulated him on his uh, season record. You know, his all-time record. Uh, that was good. It was, good it was just you, Eddie, and Terry, yeah. Uh, Terry didn't come. Terry didn't come. But we we came straight here from LA, so I'm feeling I'm feeling fresh, mate. Obviously, we're we're in Detroit. It's a big fight week for for Alicia Baumgartner. But you know, this card took a bit of a, a hit with Castro out, Hitchens Love, which was meant to happen. Then you bring in Jermaine Franklin, Andy Cruz's pro debut. How excited are you for this card? First of all, yeah, really excited. Look, as you mentioned, Hitchens Love was a real shame. That was a that was a brilliant fight that was building some real hype. Castro again, another one of our young talents who. We would love to have been on. Unfortunately, not going to be ready. Um, got picked up an injury. But yeah, Alicia, hometown, homecoming against Christina. You know, a fighter that she suffered her only defeat to. Um, you know, so it's, it's a test. It's a real. It's a proper fight. You know, Christina looks in great shape. But Alicia's a Alicia's a, a true athlete, and um, I think we're going to be in for a great fight. And you know, she's looking to avenge that sole defeat there. Andy Cruz, professional debut, special, special fighter, you know, what he's done in the in the amateurs and now coming through to the pros, we're going to move him so quickly. He's fighting in a 10-round title fight on Saturday um, and looking forward to and excited to start that journey because he's got the ability to become a star. You know, he's got that hardcore boxing audience behind him, but we need to grow it and expand that out to the broader casual boxing fans. And he's got the story to do that. So, yeah, with him, He's a, he's a tremendous talent and a, a real fight as well. You know, a real fight um, and needs a, you know, he's going to have a standout performance. You know, he's been unbelievable in training. Um, Jermaine Franklin back out as well, coming off the back of two two fights against uh, Dillian White and then Anthony Joshua. Built a huge name for himself. He's fighting 17 0, uh, undefeated Mexican who was part of the Mexican national team as well. So, you know, a, a proper fight. On Saturday, and you know, if he can come through that, there's some big fights to be made in the heavyweight division with him. You know, coming off the back of the uh, the big names, he could go in there against any of the big names, any of the top ten now. So yeah, no, excited, uh, excited to see him back in the ring as well and get a, get a, hopefully a big win. Last US show for a while. When's the next one going to land? There's been some talk of the first week in September, second week in September, Mexico, US back to back. Where's that likely to land, and, and who's a likely headliner there? We're just working through that now, first or second week of September. It was originally going to be Bivol. Bivol looks more likely to go into October now. Um, there's a potential of obviously trying to do the Love Hitchens fight, potentially. There's a potential of maybe doing, you know, the, the WBC have now ordered um, Rocky Hernandez uh, against Shaki Foster as well. Where would that land is, is that likely somewhere maybe Texas Houston where he's from yeah possibly possibly there um, you know you've got McCaskill Sandy Ryan as well as another fight that's been made that could go on one of these cards so just planning now for the first like you say first or second week of September for that and then a Mexico show following quite soon after Dillian White's had some choice words for Matchroom for Eddie more so than yourself but today he's, he's, he's commented on a, a video from I think it was Rack Noble at Boxing UK and he said, Eddie, you are a cunt. Why is why is there this animosity? You know, he talked about Matchroom having AJ's balls in in your mouths. Like, what, what's going on here? I don't know really. I think we've done a tremendous job with Dillian White. You know, worked well with him and, and delivered some big nights. Um, I guess because AJ's always been the number, like he has been the number one because we've been with him since day one and we've built together you know AJ's been a massive part of our business and, and AJ is a huge part of why boxing is where it is that's just the reality people you know people will always have their views but he is you know he he really 
relit boxing, I think, and gave opportunity to a load of other people as well. You know, I think he deserves a lot of praise and respect for that. Um, Dillian's also done a tremendous job, you know, been a headliner for a long, long time with us. Um, but yeah, our relationship with AJ is probably closer than it is with Dillian White. It's just the reality. Um, but I don't know why he's calling him uh, that, that terrible word. It's not very fair. Um, and yeah, no one's got any balls in anyone's mouth. I'll sure. Say. Yeah, I mean, as far as I, I, as far, I do a lot of talking, so I wouldn't be able to. <laughs> Fury and Ganu, what's your thoughts on that? Do you believe that that is a good fight? Do you believe that the WBC should strip Tyson Fury? I don't believe it's a good fight because you've got the best in the world at one thing and the best in the world at something else. And they're go this guy's going into this person's field and he's never done it before. Just like if Tyson Fury went in and was getting kicked in the head by Francis and Ganu, different story. You know, like he would smash smash him to pieces that way and he'd smash so I don't think it's a good fight I, I can understand it like I, I don't understand these men. like I can completely understand why Tyson Fury's doing it he's getting paid a fortune to fight someone who's never had a fight before or a, bo a boxing fight um, so I don't know you know like this is where it's funny because people judge everyone's moves but if that was you or me and someone said, you can go and do your job against someone who's never done it before or not very good at it, and you get paid a load of money, what are you going to say? You're going to say, yes, we all are. Everyone's going to say it. Whether it's everyone on Twitter who's talking it down, everyone's going to say, yes, I will do it. Do I think the WBC thing is different? I think, you know, I saw like Frank Warren's comments of, there was no one there for him to fight. We tried to make all the fights. Well, that's a load of bollocks, isn't it? You didn't try and make every fight in boxing, did you, in the heavyweight division? You tried to make the fights that made financial sense or the most financial amount of money. But the, the, the reality is a lot of the other names wouldn't make Tyson Fury enough money or Frank or, or everyone involved enough money because he couldn't sell out against some of the names people have mentioned. So you can't say, we tried to make every fight. No, you tried to make a group of fights. You could have made, like, there's... How many heavyweights are there in the world? I mean, there's another 13 that weren't mentioned in the WBC list of rankings that you could have made fights against. I, I think it's detrimental in that sense in terms of for boxing. I don't think... I don't have a problem, though, with the Fury and Garnet. Again, respect. Go and make as much money as possible. You all deserve to. You're in a dangerous sport. 100%, I think that. So I'm not going to talk that down. I don't think it's good for the belts because there's other people who built their way into the WBC rankings. They deserve a shot at the world title. And, you know, that, that's just the reality of it. I don't see him fighting Alexander Usyk ever. Because, Why? Because it would have happened. Because the numbers that were floating about, the money that was involved when that fight was spoken about, it would have happened. And, you know, there's obviously a reason as well as to why they can't make fights for him. You know, because it's multiple different people, isn't it? That they're having problems making fights against. So it's not just one, a one-off. You know, you're saying, oh, we couldn't make any fights against any of these names. You're not offering them enough money. Like, you know, loads of reasons. But, um, yeah, I, I think fair play to Tyson Fury. Go and make as much money as possible. What do you believe this is that Team Usyk have on Fury? Because they said they have something on Tyson Fury. What could that possibly be? Any guesses? Honestly, not a clue. Not a clue. I don't know. Um, look, one thing about Alexander Usyk, he doesn't shy away from any chat. He wants every fight. He wants the big fights. He's not afraid of anyone. What he's done in the sport from cruiserweight coming up, quite quite amazing. Um, and I, don't, I don't, honestly don't know what he's got on them. Um, but, you know, he's, he's got a big fight with Dubois. And then, you know, IBF mandatory is next in Philip Hergovic. Just moving on, you, you went for dinner with Regis Progray. How did that go? What does it look likely next? We've heard the, you know, Haney back and forth, but it looks like Haney Lopez is probably going to happen. Haney Tiafimo. Would it be Progray Jack Catterall? I don't think Haney Lopez happens. I just think the, the money, like you saw a lot of the comments that Devin was making about the money that Tiafimo was. I, I don't see it happening, if I'm honest. Um, discussions still ongoing around Haney Progray. The WBC have said that if that fight can't be made, then the Sandor Martin, who, who's number one in the WBC rankings. Obviously, we want to make the biggest fights, so we're pushing hard to try and make Haney Progray. Let's see what happens. Where does that leave Jack Catterall and all this? Who does he potentially fight next? Jorge Linares, maybe? 
Possibly, yeah. That's the kind of name that you know that, that makes sense. You know, we want to keep building his profile. I think the key is as well. He's had a long time out of the ring, so he looked great in that fight back against Dara Foley. Um, you know, it was a tr brilliant performance for him for, for how long he did out. And you know, our focus now is to get him back out in October time. You know, just five five months after, um, and then and then build from there. We want to deliver him a world title shot, but the, the politics of the sport and mandatories, etc. You know, we obviously have to abide by. October were potential opponents other than Linares who um, look we got a big one forty stable you know whether it's Liam Parra who was supposed to fight Regis Progre could be another name um, and and looking around Manchester hopefully but uh, in October time is definitely the focus for us Devin Haney arrested last night any comment to make on that no I don't I, I saw like a tweet about it but I don't know anything about it I think um, so I wouldn't really want to talk about it but I, I think he's he's out on bail isn't he so any meetings with Team Haney you know about potentially working together I know Eddie said that you were due to meet in LA did that happen yeah Eddie's been speaking to them um, you know we've got a great relationship with Devon and the team um, and like I say it's still still something we're working towards is, is trying to make that progress fight so hopefully we can get something done soon. Carlos Sarlin made some comments on Eubank Liam Smith basically said we're not waiting around on Conor Ben anymore who's next for Conor Ben then? Let's wait and see let's wait and see look we got to deal with the situation at hand with Conor Ben which is coming to uh, all we're going to have news soon on um, but there's massive fights out there to be made for Conor Ben. Who with? Tons. Like, honestly, so many names out there. Give me two names. Uh, give you two names. Okay. Josh Taylor could be a big fight. Like, you saw the back and forth between the two of them. Kelbrook could be an interesting fight between the two. Yeah, Pacquiao we've been talking about. Like, he's willing to take it. One thing about Conor Ben, he will fight anyone. At any weight from 147 to 160. Um, you know, he, he wants all those fights. So... That's the focus for us now. Is but look, we got we're very close to some news, very very soon, and then we'll be able to play out the rest of these conversations. The British Boxing Board of Control have now formally ordered Fabio Wardley to defend his title against David Adelaide. Purse bids August 9th, I believe. Matchroom want that fight, and and where and when could that potentially land? Brilliant fight, brilliant fight. Yeah, purse bids, and I'm sure uh, being a uh, being a well-established promoter in Queensbury, they're not going to pull out this man out of a purse bid. You know, they know what they're doing, so um, and they want to deliver the best opportunity for their fighter. So, yes, we want that fight, and we'll work hard to to make get that over the line. Um, but purse bids, I'm sure, will be fun unless something gets done beforehand. We spoke last week, and I, I guess Jay Opatai was was the signing, and it, it came to fruition yesterday. Have you been involved in discussions with Boxer and Rackpore on this? And do you feel like there's the likely situation again about Boxer maybe pulling them out of the fight like they did with uh, Fraser Clark? Um, yeah, there's been conversations going on with Boxer, obviously via Jai's team, uh, and we've been involved our end uh, through that. Do I think they pull him out? I think they'd be mad to pull him out, but nothing would shock me. You know, you can't really pull a fighter out of a world title shot. Um, an opportunity that they've worked a long time for. So let's see. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna second guess anything. You know, we we you know great to be working with Tasman and Mick and Tasman fighters and uh, and building you know build out a plan for Joy. You know, obviously Australia is a market that we're you know got a lot of interest in in in, in building. You now we've got six or seven brilliant fighters from Australia. And to add him to the stable, you know, was a was a real, real good moment. Um, but I don't know. Let's see what happens on that. We're ready for a purse bid, and uh, we'll go from there. Last one from me. Match from Australia. When's it back? Um, hopefully with Joe. When? Depends on the per, you know times of the purse bid and everything. But sort of September to August, September. Well, Frank, thank you very much. We'll catch up again tomorrow. Really appreciate it, bit. Colin, thank you very much. Catch up tomorrow. Really appreciate. It. You need to stop with this, Colin. You know. Thanks. It's all going down in Newcastle. You don't want to miss this one.
Join us for the very first IFL Live at London's Indigo at the O2, Sunday, August the 13th, with me, Coogan Cassius, and some very special guests, Eddie Hearn, Darren Barker, Johnny Fisher, and more. Tickets now on sale. So in the words of Eddie Hearn, you get up, you dress up, and you fucking show up.